G'day folks, I'm Ren, they, them, and welcome to the mid-year book tag. So, for some little stats, first of all, I have so far this year, and I'm including this year as the beginning of January to the end of June, and in that amount of time I have read 119 books. Before you get all excited, most of those are probably manga. So, for some few more little stats of how many books have I reread this year? Eight. That's more than one a month. Um, how many of those rereads were this book? Who knows? Um, probably a few. You can kind of tell how my mental health is going by how many times I read Project Hail Mary. And then another little stat is how many DNFs have I had so far? And so far in 2024, I have had six DNFs. I don't know if that's a good stat or not. Who knows? Um, there might be more by the end of the year. Who knows? Now, me being a stereotypical bisexual, I can't make a decision. So there's going to be several options for basically all of these questions. So the first question is the best book you've read this year. This was actually kind of hard because all this year I have felt like I haven't found a standout like oh my god this is my new all-time favorite like like I haven't found a new wolf song or a new what moves the dead or a new boyfriend material you know like those books that just as soon as I read them I was like you are my everything and you will always be my everything I haven't found one of those yet so slightly upsetting but I have read some amazing books this year. So the first one I'm going to talk about is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. So this is a middle grade mm, sci-fi? I say sci-fi because there's a robot, but that's about as sci-fi as it gets. At least in the first book. It is a trilogy and I cannot wait to read the rest of them. But in this book we are following a robot who kind of like washed up on shore on this island and they're like well I don't really know what to do and it ends up just kind of becoming a part of the forest and a part of the ecosystem there like it makes friends with all the animals and it actually ends up raising a I can't remember the specific bird name for some reason my mind wants to say albatross but it's not an albatross <laughs> a bird okay the robot finds a baby bird and raises it and it calls her mama and they have the sweetest relationship. It's just, it's so cute because this robot is like, I can't do the things for my son that its mother would have been able to do, but I'm its mother now. So I'm gonna figure out how to do that my way. And it's so cute. I was obsessed. I loved it so much, but this was such an interesting book. And I loved the, the like progression that the robot had, how, you know by like the end of the book like she has moss growing from her and like she's covered in like leaves and stuff and that's just her natural kind of being and I'm like that's just super cute also I just found out that this got turned into a movie and it's coming out in a few months so I am so hyped for that okay the next book that I thought was absolutely fantastic this year was me moth by Amber McBride. Oh my gosh, this absolutely blew me away. This is a novel told in verse and it's YA-esque. Oh, it's so hard to talk about this book because there's a twist in it that I never saw coming. It blew me away and then when it was revealed, I was like, oh yeah. I can piece together all of those moments that was so smartly done because you could either take it as as one way and it makes total sense but then if you take it the twist way it also makes total sense but they're two completely different ways of looking at the situation it was brilliant I loved it I really loved the poetry in it as well I thought that was great and it was so well done as a storytelling technique. The kind of gist of this is there's 
a boy and a girl, both on like, I almost want to say like self-discovery quest type things. Yeah, they're on a, a road trip together. So the girl, Moth, she is feeling very like disconnected from things because a lot of stuff happened to her in her life. The boy, Sani, is new to the school and he like acknowledges her, which is more than anyone else did. And they kind of form this really great relationship where they're just really understanding of each other. And Sani is going through a lot of stuff himself and a lot of like mental health issues. And you know, they, they're kind of, I don't want to say they're like trauma bonding, but in a way it's like they've both finally found someone who understands and stuff happens on the road trip and things are revealed. And it was just so, so beautiful. I think about this book often and like I read it towards the beginning of the year and I'm still like, damn, that was good. Then the last best book that I'm going to talk about is Bad Water by Travis Liebert. This is a really short horror story and I'd had it on my Kindle for like a year or something and I was like, one day I'll read it. And then we had the Kindle Mayhem in May and I was like, this is going to be one of the ones I read because it's been on my Kindle for ages. And every time I see the cover, I'm like, damn, I've got to read that. So I finally read it. It was so good. Oh my God, such a cool little horror story that was so unique. I hadn't come across a horror story like that before. And there was definitely like some elements of like some movies that I'd watched that like triggered a memory, but Bad Water was very unique and very well done. And I was really like invested in the story and the atmosphere that the author had created. And it's so, so short. And I was like, surely it can't be as good as I want it to be in such a short amount of time. I was wrong. It was amazing. So good, so scary. And it's about this diver who is a part of like a search and rescue in a particular, I don't know, this, a particular system of rivers that are all interconnected. He's in search and rescue with a bunch of other guys and there's a particular place in this river that he's always been told, you know, don't go in there, that's the bad water. That's where like, if you go in, you're not coming out because like some rips and the vegetation there is just too thick and it's just so easy to lose your life there. So he was always like, yep, cool, not gonna go there. And then this kid goes missing and he's really, really sure that the kid's in the bad water. So he tries to save the kid and he finds out that the bad water is bad. Um, and not because of any, you know, safety particular reasons. I mean, it's definitely not safe, but for other reasons. The image of the bad water, it was so good. So unbelievably creepy. And I loved it. Just, oh, I just want someone to read it so I can talk about that imagery because, oh, so gross in the best way. And then it's just this whole thing of, how far the bad water reaches and what is it and can we stop it? And also about choosing a lesser evil in a way and kind of the moral consequences of that. And like, guys, this is so short, but it's so freaking good. Please go read it. Anyone who likes horror stories, go read it. I had such a fun time. So question number two is what's the best sequel you've read this year? And this was a little bit hard to pick because any kind of sequels that I've read, they've all been from a manga, but there was a sequel that I read this year that I thoroughly enjoyed and I would love to read more from this world if there will be anything, that would be great. But it is Sword and Thistle by S.L. Rowland. This is the sequel to Cursed Cocktails, which I read last year, it was one of my faves of the year. I reread it this year and it was great still absolutely loved it. So these are cozy fantasy stories. Now in the first one it was following these two characters who opened up a bar or a, not so much a bar but like a very fancy little like cocktail lounge and they served all these amazing cocktails and it's not following those two 
but it's following a patron that came in. He had like one scene where he came in and he was like, huh, this place exists. And he was an adventurer and he, like his quest thing that he was on at that time was procuring a particular like delicacy for these rich people to go eat. And he does that like once a year, pays really well. And they always want like the weirdest, most rare, valuable thing and they want to eat it. So that's what he was talking about when he was at the bar. In the sequel, we are following him and he is going on another one of these quests to get the rare item that these rich people can eat. And it really is just about his quest. Even though it is like a quest kind of fantasy book, it still felt really cozy. And it was just like soft and caring while still being this like fantasy story. And he meets some people along the way that help him with this quest. And it was a really interesting kind of place that they led to where like death was kind of involved and like ghostly things or ghouls or it was this very interesting little almost like City of the Dead type thing. I really enjoyed it and I loved his companion that he got. So cute and I loved like their dynamic. Cause like they were almost like kind of snarky to each other, but also like very much like ride or die was happening there. So good. Um, but it was just such a great little story. And I am really intrigued to see what SL Roland is going to come up with next. Cause they were great. Number three is a new release that you haven't yet read. Two stand out for me. So the first one is The Honey Witch by Sydney J Shields. This is a cozy fantasy, I believe, and it's sapphic. And I had wanted to read this like as soon as the cover image came out and it was, you know, sapphic. I was like, oh my God, great, love this. Um, and then I just haven't picked it up since it's been released. And I was reminded of it when Riley from Riley Marie did a vlog about it, where she read it and she was just thoroughly impressed. And I was like, yes, that book, I need to read it. Cause cozy fantasy, Plus sapphic? Of course I want to read that. Then the next one is one I can't believe I haven't read. Like, who am I that I haven't read this yet? And that is What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. Yeah. The sequel to What Moves the Dead. My favorite book of last year. And I haven't read it. I think I'm a little intimidated. Because What Moves the Dead was so good for me, I'm worried that What Feasts at Night won't be. Um, but I do really want to read it because I loved the main character in What Moves the Dead and we are following them on, I guess, more little missions that they'll be doing. And the horse. I also am scared because I just want the horse to live. And I'm worried because the cover. That's a dead horse on the cover. Um, if the horse dies, I will riot. So then we have a most anticipated book from the second half of the year. Again, I got two. First up is Haunted Ever After by Jen DeLuca. Oh my god, I'm so excited for this. This is a romance and it's by Dan DeLuca who wrote the Well Met series and Well Met was one of my favourite books. Did I read that last year? Maybe. So it was one of my favourite romance books. I really love it. That series is phenomenal and this one's ghost-esque. Yes, please. Yes, please. That's amazing. Just putting all of my loves together. Cannot wait. And the next one is of course Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune. Of course I was gonna have a TJ Klune on this list. So Somewhere Beyond the Sea is the sequel to House in the Cerulean Sea. I loved House in the Cerulean Sea. It was great. TJ Klune is my favorite everything of all time ever. So anything he writes, I wanna read. And I think this one will be interesting considering how House in the Cerulean Sea ended. I don't think it really like needed a sequel but I can understand why TJ Klune felt there was more story to tell because of all of the changes that happened to the characters towards the end of House in the Cerulean Sea. So it's going to be interesting to see like the new dynamic and if we just get more Sal, can we just get like Sal like finding confidence and realizing that he's really really loved especially by me. I love Sal. Sal's my favorite of the kids. So I really hope we see more of Sal. I'm really looking forward to that and all the kids and just TJ Klune. Then we have the biggest disappointment. 
I have four. Whoopsie doopsie. So the first one, I'm just gonna, because I know a lot of people that I adore love this book, and I didn't. And that's Mayfly by CJ Lead. I'm so sorry. I gave this 2.5. I think I just wanted so much more from this. It felt like, like we were ramping up to the really like disgusting, horrific things. And then it like backed away. And I was like, no, keep going. Keep being more horrific. And I think I just wanted more of the really like depraved stuff. Um, but it felt, I guess it felt overhyped in the goriness because all I had heard about it was it was just the most like disgusting horror ever and it was really brutal and everything and I was like awesome let me read that and then I was underwhelmed by the gore like there are some definite gross things I have the one image in my head there was acid stuff and some hot things. Yeah, so that was gross. Um, I just wanted more. <laughs> I wanted so, so much more. And maybe I need to reread it because when we did the live show for Big Booty Bitches Club, book club, B, 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 B. I can't remember if I got all the Bs in the right order, but that. When we did the live show for that, I was the only one that didn't have a good time. Everyone else did, which like makes sense. And then as they were talking about it, I was like, yeah, that was good. And so like, as they were talking about how much they loved it, I was like, did I like it more than I thought I did? So I kind of want to do a reread and figure out if it is actually amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Cause sometimes that happens for me with really popular books is I'm gonna hate them because they're popular. Um, but then I could go back and reread them and love them. Case in point, House in the Cerulean Sea. When I read that for the first time, when it was like in its peak, I gave it three stars and I was like, hmm, kind of mid. Um, then I reread it later on, five stars, fantastic, love it. So I think I do really wanna read this, like reread it and see if like the popularity of it won't influence me as much this time around. I don't know, I just wanted it to be super, super gross and it was only super gross, you know? Then we have The Maid by Nita Prose. I gave this two stars? I gave this 2.25 stars. That might have been too kind. So I read this for the Autism Acceptance Readathon. This was about a maid that like discovers a dead body in her hotel and she helps solve it, kind of. That's what I thought was gonna happen. Um, the maid is the one who is autistic and oh boy is she infantilized so much. Like holy crap. Just everyone around her babies her so much and she really just like leans into that and it's just like oh she can't do anything for herself and oh poor her, poor her, poor her. I'm like no, like I don't want to read another story where an autistic person is seen as a child. And not all of us are that overtly childlike. A lot of us keep it on the inside. The autism rep really frustrated me like so much. I was so mad at everything this main character was doing and the way that everyone treated her. But then like the story itself kind of sucked. I didn't like it. I didn't like the reveal of like who the killer was and all this kind of stuff. I didn't care, not one bit at all. Then we have Is Love the Answer by Yuta Isaki. This is a manga and it is all about asexuality, which I am asexual. So I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to read this. It was so hyped for me for so, so long. I gave it three stars and like three stars might be good, but this was a five star prediction for me. I was so excited because asexuality in a manga, huge, huge. I didn't care at all. I did not care about the main character or about her discovering her asexuality. I didn't care about the info dumping of asexuality. I didn't care about the people around her and I didn't care of the friendships that she was making and the house that she moved into. I didn't care about any of it. 
I was so disappointed. <sighs> so, so disappointed. It was just boring. It was just so, so boring for me and that's upsetting. Okay, and then the last most disappointing book of the year, which honestly, this might be my answer towards the end of the year as well. It's Cherry Magic, um, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard by Yu Toyota. I gave this 2.75 and like that 0.75 is purely for the last like four pages. I was so hyped for this because Gavin read this and loved it. He's obsessed with the whole series now. And I was like, ooh, cool, queer manga, love that. I did not like this, like at all, really, if we're being honest. So the premise is that if you get to the age of 30 while your virginity, social construct bullshit, is still intact, you will get magical powers. And it seems to be like you'll be able to read minds. That seems to be like the consensus of what's happening. And so this guy gets the powers and realizes that this guy in his office has a crush on him. The work colleague, he's adorable. The way he's just like, oh my God, look at his bed head, so cute. Oh, I need to like make sure I'm not staring at him too much. Like it was very sweet. The main character though, ugh. I guess like he's never thought about being in a relationship with a guy before. And so he's kind of trying to come to terms with the fact that a guy likes him. Like, I can understand that. But the way he's always like, oh my God, I can't be alone with this guy because he's gonna try something. Are you serious? And I know that that's a cultural thing, but oh boy, was he just like villainizing this guy because he was gay. And like, there's no evidence for this guy to be so afraid of this other guy? Like, what has he ever done to make you think he's going to violate you? Nothing! He hardly talks to you because he's so scared that he's gonna like let loose and tell you how he feels. But that's like what this whole thing was about, with this guy going, oh my god, he's gonna do something. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like you so much. So the next question is, what was the biggest surprise of the year? Again, I have choices. So the first biggest surprise was Sweat and Soap by Kintetsu Yamada. This I read in January because I did a Girlfriend Chooses My Manga TBR and she wanted me to read this because she loves it so, so much. And I was always a bit hesitant to read it because of the premise, because the premise is literally, this woman sweats a lot, this guy has like a super sniffer and then they enter a relationship. It just, it wasn't super appealing to me. And then I read it, okay? And and we're in like July now and I'm about to read volume 11, which is the last one. This is amazing. <laughs> I did not think I would love this as much as I did. Like I really want everyone to just give it a chance. You're not gonna fully understand how freaking adorable this is. I love these two. In a relationship, they are the best. They're so soft and sweet and kind and respectful. And oh my God, I love them. This is like the perfect relationship. And I just, I just want everyone to go and read it now because it's so good. Then the next biggest surprise was Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This was a surprise because like, this was kind of my last chance for Schwab. I have read a few of their books before. The premise for all of them was always so good. And then I read it and I was like, eh? And I was like, maybe just V Schwab writing isn't for me, but I did have Gallant on my shelves and I was like, all right, I'll give this a go, not expecting anything. And if I don't like this one, then I'm gonna officially not try and pick up a V Schwab ever again. I loved this, five stars. I could not put this down, had to read it all in one setting, in one sitting. But this is about this girl who receives like a, a letter saying she's inherited a house. And she's like, huh, didn't know that. She goes to the house and the people working there are like, you shouldn't have come. And they're all like very wary of everything that's happening. And she's like, uh, what? I want a house, I get a house. But there's some like curse happening basically to the people of this house and there are like ghosts and ghouls around which is awesome 
and we get a lot of stuff this is like a mixed media thing so we get some like journal entries from her mother who was passed or just missing. I can't remember her, if her mum died or if she was missing, but we get a lot of that and then that helps really almost like add to like the sinister feel of what's going on in this house because clearly something was happening with the mother. But this was so freaking good. I absolutely loved it and now I want to give V.U. Schwab another chance. And then the last biggest surprise was one I actually read last month and I am so shocked because I read I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman and I loved it. Now, the reason this was a surprise was like, because even though I love Alice Oseman, this was the last thing of hers that I needed to read. So I've now read everything, but I was putting this off for the longest time because I don't like books about music. And this follows a band and then some of their fans. And you know, it's about them being a band. <laughs> and everything that entails. Why did I ever doubt Alice Oseman? Honestly, why? Because at the end of the day, this wasn't about music. It was very much more about fame, which like I also don't super love, but because Alice Oseman, it was so much deeper than all of that. So at the heart of it, this was really about anxiety, massive, massive anxiety and how being famous just exacerbates that. You have no privacy when you're a celebrity, you know? People know where you live. You can't leave your house without being spotted. And there are always rumors circulating about you or your, your friends or lovers or anything. Like that's terrifying. I so, feel like a lot of things were really like deep and emotional and I can't believe it's got five stars. The next question is a new favorite author. I don't think I have one. I've been reading so just kind of all over the place this year that I haven't been able to like solidify a new author. The next question is your new fictional favorite crush thing. Um, I don't have like a crush, but I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say um, Asako and Natori, who is the couple in this uh, relationship and it's not like that I'm crushing on either of them. I mean, they're both adorable and just stunning. The thing I'm most in love with is their relationship with each other and how much they care about each other and how they, they like, they make space for each other within their relationship. You know, they're still like, they're individual people, but they're also a couple. But I just love how much they love each other. So the next question is your newest favoritest character. And without a doubt, it has to be Yakuchi, who is the cat from The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today by Hitsuzi Yamada. This is about a cat that is so much more than a cat. It's six feet tall, it can understand human speech, it cooks, it cleans, it sews, it does so many things. So it's like very human-like, but also is a cat. But I love Yakuchi because he's just so quietly sassy because he's taking care of this disaster human. <laughs> she cannot take care of herself. So the cat does it for her. And he's always just like, God damn human, why you gotta be so messy? And then goes and like cleans everything. And then when Saku is like, oh my God, I love you. You know, you're so amazing. Yakuchi's like, okay. It's so cute because they're just, they're such a cute like dynamic with each other. I love the whole like, looks like could kill you is a cinnamon roll. Yakuchi kind of gives that vibe, but Kitty, Kitty is the best. So the next question is a book that made you cry. And for this, I have four, cause I'm just an emotional wreck this year, apparently. First up, yes, this made me cry a lot at the time of this. I think I was also dealing with anxiety myself and like it helped me through it, but also the characters, all of the stuff they have to go through. Oh. So next up is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. When there are characters that have really deep emotional connections with each other, that's when I start getting really emotional. So the relationship between this robot mother and her bird son Oh, they're so cute. Emotions. 
Then we have 49 Days by Agnes Lee. This is a graphic novel and it's to do with death and the, I believe it was Buddhist. I could be wrong. I read this at the beginning of the year, but it is about the kind of tradition of what happens in the afterlife. This character, she passes and we get her point of view and then her family's point of view. And what happens is there's like 49 days where you go on a journey in the afterlife to, I guess, come to acceptance of the fact that you have passed. And so we get like her trying to accept it, but then you also get throughout those 49 days, her family also having to accept it, which again, super emotional, but it was really, really beautifully done. And I want more people to read that because that was phenomenal. Then we have Our Dreams at Dusk by Yuki Kamatani. This is a queer manga series and oh my gosh, it's so good. I've only read the first volume. I have purchased the next four. I think there's only four so far. This was very emotional, but it does have like found family vibes, which I love. So we start with this main character getting outed at school and then what he has to deal with from that. He's very much like, oh no, I'm not gay and tries to really like push back against it. But then, you know, we get what that does to him on the inside of denying who he is. And he gets to a really, really dark place. Trigger warnings for suicide and suicidal thoughts. But then he meets this person. She was called like nobody or somebody or something like that. She just had this really interesting, like who is she kind of vibe. But she kind of leads him to this, I don't know, like communal space. And there are a lot of other queer people in this space, um, some older, some younger, and it's just the kind of a place where everyone can go and feel safe. So a place where he can feel safe and like that alone is enough to make me cry. It was phenomenally done and I cannot wait to read the rest of them. So then we have a book that made you happy. It's all gonna be manga, cause hi. First up, Sweat and Soap. This makes me amazingly happy because they are just so soft and sweet. Then this one, this is definitely the number one favorite of the year. Like, oh my God, I am obsessed. And just, I laugh in every volume because Yakuchi has done something like adorable or sassy or just funny in general. And it's so cute and gives me all the warm and fuzzies. Then the next one is Why I Adopted My Husband by Yuga Yati. This is a non-fiction manga about same-sex marriage in Japan. Like it talks a lot about how difficult it is to be legally recognized as someone's spouse if you're in a same-sex marriage in Japan. I didn't expect it to be like as funny as it was because it's all told from the point of view of this guy and his husband and they just have the funniest little dynamic and they're telling this story which could definitely have been a very emotional story, but they're like, haha, funny. And like, they make it really lighthearted and it was just the cutest thing. The next question is, what is the most beautiful book you have acquired this year? Without a doubt, it's this one. It's Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. Poranik, Poranik? So sorry, but just look at this. Is this not the most me cover you've ever seen? It's stunning. Also, this kind of reminds me of the cover for the CD for A Day to Remember's album, Homesick. Was it called Homesick? I don't know. If I can, I will put the cover image here. But that vibe is this vibe because there's definitely the similar colors and there's like some vine stuff happening. Oh, so good. But this is stunning. There is a skull in the background. You can't see any of my skulls, but there are many skulls around here. Um, there are shrooms. My little shroom garden there of crystals. Love shrooms. It is forest vibes. I love forests. There is a moon. I have many moons all around here too. Do I have, wait, am I wearing moons? Or are they just stars? Oh no, I think that's meant, there's a moon. Yeah, there's a moon. <laughs> this is just such a stunning cover. Uh, raised in a small village near the spirit wood. 
very cool. There are monsters. Ooh, she is caught by the demon warden of the wood, the Leshy. Oh, so cool. Who offers her a bargain, one year of servitude in exchange for a wish. So yeah, this sounds absolutely phenomenal. Is this YA? I don't know if it's YA or not. But like, also just like, look at the spine. Isn't that pretty? And the next question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I have four-ish for this. So the first one is The Perengi Boy by Shiloh Kino. This was one of the books I bought when I went to New Zealand last year for my birthday. And I had a kind of goal this year to read all of the books that I bought from New Zealand by the end of the year. And I think this is the last one I have to read. Very much looking forward to that. This is just about a kid wanting to protect his land. Another one is Butcher and Blackbird by whoever the author is. Oh my gosh. So I was reading this a couple months ago and it was like, it was gonna be the book of the year for me. You know how I said at the beginning, I haven't had one book that's been like the new best of all time. It was gonna be Butcher and Blackbird. I was listening to it on an audiobook. It was fantastic. I was so hooked. I had two hours left of the audiobook when my hold returned. <sighs> two hours left. That's it. To make matters worse, like how, how long do you think I had to wait until I get that audiobook again? 18 weeks. 18 weeks to find out the last like 100 pages of a book. <sighs> so frustrating. As of now, I still don't have it. I am still desperately waiting. Actually, can we see how many weeks left there are? Seven weeks. There we go, seven weeks left until I get this. So yeah, I definitely need to read that by the end of the year or I will lose my mind. Another book slash books that I wanna finish by the end of the year is the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. I have book four and five left to read. For the first three books, I'm obsessed. They're all like five stars. One of my favorite series of all time. I just need to finish it so I can like officially claim it as one of my favorite series of all time. So definitely need to get to that. I have been warned that book four is like extra. So I need to prepare myself. So I think that's why I've kind of put it off because I'm like, I need to be in a stable emotional state to read these books. And I'm not right now. <laughs> so hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be good mentally enough that I can read those because I really want to love them because they're so good. And then the last books that I need to finish by the end of the year is the last two books in the Del Toro Quest by Emily Rodder. I am planning on reading them this month. We'll see if that happens, but I would really like to finish this series as well. It's a middle grade fantasy series and it's so much fun and reading it physically has been a really nice time for me because I'm not the biggest physical reader, but middle grade just hits different with physical reading. I really like it. And this is just such a fun series. So I would really like to finish that by the end of the year. Next question is what is the favorite manga that you've read this year? The ones I'm going to mention, a thousand percent this, number one spot. It's utterly fantastic. The best thing I've ever read. Also this, also one of the best things I've ever read. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly obsessed. It's amazing. Another favorite manga of the year is Dinosaur Sanctuary by Itaru Kinoshita. This is very much what it sounds like. It's about dinosaurs that exist in today's world and the like zookeepers kind of that care for them. And it's just got a whole bunch of information on these carers caring for the dinosaurs. It's very wholesome and just super cute. I love all the dinosaurs, just how these people are like bonding with them. It's just, it's cute and it's different for a manga and I love it. But yeah, that's gonna be my mid-year book tag. Uh, hope it was interesting, but that's gonna be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.